So the other things that we should probably look at here are the remaining settings for uh, for the administra administrator tasks. And if we, if we quickly just go through all of these uh, settings now, we'll start on the diagnostic logging settings. Uh, and, and the diagnostic logging settings are really important. Uh, and I'll actually do a special uh, chapter on, or at least a section uh, on, on using diagnostic logging, because that's really important in, in the SharePoint uh, development experience. Uh, but basically what you want to check here is um, how uh, w what level do you want your uh, logs and event uh, uh, event log to to log events right and and to do this you'll go to the event throttling section and you'll find what category you want to to have uh, to, to configure you can set all of them and then you will basically say what's the least critical event that you want reported in the event log and that's that's just the Windows event log right so you go to administrative tools and you'll go to event viewer and you'll find those uh, errors there. You can set these to, to any number of, of setting just, uh, and uh, in general, uh, the, the further down on this list you go, the more information you get. So if you set information, you'll basically get a lot of information in the, in the event log. Uh, and if you go to just errors, which is probably the most common setting, uh, you'll just get the, the really serious stuff in the event viewer. And, and for the trace log, the Windows uses a separate uh, logging mechanism and, and it logs everything to text files. And it might be a good idea to actually keep this higher than you would in a production environment for the trace log because while you're developing, you, you probably want to log a lot of information and, and you do, do, if you do something, you want to see what actually goes on, and especially if you have any errors or, or problems here. So you might just want to set this to medium just to en ensure that you get, get uh, more information than you, than you otherwise would. And the, the, the last thing that you might want to set here, uh, in a lab environment, in a, when you're developing stuff, you, you probably don't need to have, you know, last, like the last hour or so of logging information. It will take a long time to actually search through all that content. So you might want to set the, the, the amount of, of logging stored uh, to, to a lower settings here. Uh, and the way you do this in, in the trace log here, you'll define how many log files you actually want. And in this example, we'll just say, uh, we'll say five. Uh, and if and the second thing you set here is how long you want each of those log files to use, be used. So if you set five minutes here as well, you'll basically have 25 minutes of logging data uh, in, the, in this lab environment. And that's probably more than enough to actually check out what's, what's going on if you, if you get an error here. So now we'll set, uh, just hit OK here. And that sort of concludes the, the um, diagnostic logging uh, task that we want to complete here. So the last thing we want to do is the, the antivirus protection. And to be honest, I, um, I'm not a big fan of, uh, of antivirus here. So basically what I do here is I just go in and I'll hit OK and it'll remove the task for me. But if you, if you have installed a separate, uh, a separate antivirus solution, then you might want to do that if you're developing some kind of uh, solution for antivirus scanning. Uh, then definitely spend some time in here to, to actually set this up. But for in the lab environment, and especially on the server, you probably don't need uh, need any antivirus protection. So that'll basically set up the, the final uh, setting here. Uh, or actually, the, the second to last, fin second to last uh, setting. Uh, because the final thing we want to do is configure the workflow settings. And the workflow settings basically allow you to specify whether or not you can uh, have uh, user-defined workflows on on each of the web applications that you're uh, you've set up, and and, and mostly you, you you can leave the settings to, to the default settings here, and it'll basically say, well, are they allowed to actually have any user-defined workflows? And the second thing is, uh, do you want to alert internal users to when they get uh, get uh, any workflow tasks assigned to them? And would you like to, to have external users participate in the workflow uh, by sending a copy of the document? So if you're working on a, on a document and, and you have an external user, a partner or something like that, and they're, they're participating in the workflow, we can actually send them the document to, to ensure that they can, uh, can approve it or, or comment on it or whatever you want. So once we hit uh, OK now, we can go back to the front page and you'll still see that the configure workflow settings is, uh, is set here. So if you want to get rid of this, you actually go, to go into uh, the workflow task itself and then you'll have to delete it manually. Of course, it'll be stored in the recycle bin so you can always restore it uh, 
So that's basically what I wanted to show you in this video and in this series, actually, because we're now ready to start on the actual uh, actual uh, work that we're going to do. So I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you have comments or if you have questions, uh, make sure to add a comment to, to this video or you might want to uh, drop by my blog. I'll uh, put the addresses up on the screen now. And of course, uh, if you want to, to be notified when the issue number five releases, then you should probably sign up for the...